Hello world, Lisa Fredrickson here, your friend and computer science professor from Johnson County Community College with another short screencast on JavaScript.info, the modern JavaScript tutorial, section 2.7, operators. It's a very important lesson. Operators are the characters that help you create an expression. And they are simple characters such as the addition character, the plus sign, the multiplication character, the asterisk, the subtraction character, the minus sign, and so on. Right off the bat, though, he throws out some terms that you'll see in documentation that are nice to understand. Unary, binary, and operand. An operand is simply the values that the operators are applied to. So for something as simple as 5 plus 4, the operands are 5 and 4. In this expression on line 7, the operand is the discount variable. In this expression on line 11, price and discount are the operands. The operands are the values that are being manipulated in the expression. Unary operator is when you have an operator that works on one operand. So an example on line 7, we have a unary operator minus that's working on the discount operand. But here on line 11, we have a binary operator because this operator is working on two operands, price and discount. Now, who really cares if it's a unary operator or a binary operator as long as you can evaluate the expression? Still, it's very good to have this basic terminology under your belt. As the author goes through this lesson, he will give you little snippets and then alert out the value of that variable at various times. It's very important that you go through this slowly and carefully and run all these pieces of code to make sure that you understand how this works. For example, the statement x is equal to a minus x, that would make no sense in algebra unless x was equal to zero. And so that's why I am begging you to say, when you see that equal sign, instead of saying is equal to, say is assigned to. Because if we let x and we assign it to one, and now we take that same x variable and we assign it to a negative of one, it makes total sense that x is now equal to minus one in JavaScript language. In algebra language, that would not make sense. That's a key issue to get your head around is how these math symbols, particularly the equal sign, which is the assignment statement, is used in computer science. In this case, we're talking about a binary. The minus sign is working on y and x, two different operands. And we're assigning two values here on the same statement. We're assigning x to be equal to one and y be assigned to three and then we're alerting out 3 minus 1, which is going to be 2. And that's exactly what the alert box gives you. So you can practice with these alerts in the lesson. You can put them in your Visual Studio code and then test this in the browser and console log out your statements. But no matter how you practice this, make sure that all of these statements make sense because they will all become critical for your success going forward. Now, here's an especially important part of the lesson, the plus sign. The plus sign in JavaScript has two different meanings, depending upon the type of data that it's working on. For example, if the plus sign is working on strings, then the strings are going to get concatenated, even if just one of the values is a string. In this case, we're adding string 1 and 2. We're going to get 1, 2. If we add 2 plus string 1, we're going to get 21. If any part of that equation, when we have two operands, is a string, we're going to end up with a string. Now, in this case, we take two numbers and we add them for to string one, we're going to get 41. Because the first operator is going to work as a math operator, the second one then takes the result of that and adds it to string one. However, the plus sign is the only math operator that has this way of working with strings. When you're working with the minus sign or the divide sign or the multiply sign, it makes no sense to subtract, divide, or multiply strings in JavaScript language. So JavaScript will try to make sense of that expression and actually convert behind the scenes a string to a number when it sees the minus sign divide sign or multiply sign. So in this case, 2 minus string 1, this gets converted to number 1, and we result is 1. And in this case, string 6 divided by string 2, both of those get converted to numbers, 
before the division happens and we get number three. Going on in the lesson, he talks about the unary plus sign. It will convert a piece of data to a number. For example, if x is assigned to one, a plus x also gives you one. That makes total sense. If y is assigned to a minus two, a plus adding a minus two will give you a minus two. That's the same in algebra as well. But if we plus the true, then a conversion to a number goes on behind the scenes, as you learned in the previous two lessons, and one is a result. If we convert quote, quote, which is a Boolean false, to a number, we are going to get zero. This plus sign is the same thing as wrapping that value with that number function that we did in the previous lesson. Here's an interesting thing. If we have a variable named apples and it's assigned to string two, and a variable named oranges and it's assigned to string three, what happens when we add apples and oranges? Well, two strings are being added, that plus sign is no longer adding, it's concatenating, and we get text 23 as expected. However, if we convert to a number, convert to a number before we add them, then we're taking two plus three, and we're going to get five. And so here's the longer explanation of how that happened. Another question you might have is, well, how did we know to convert apples to two and oranges to the number three before we added them together? Which takes place first? These little plus signs, the unary plus sign, or the addition of the two values? And that's where the operator precedence lesson comes in. And you probably remember from math class about parentheses taking precedence over multiplication and division, which take precedence over addition and subtraction. And sometimes that's called, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, for parentheses, exponentiation, multiplication and division, adding and subtracting. Or PEMDAS is the another acronym that's given to that order precedence. Well, when you get inside JavaScript, you have even more operators to add to that list. For example, unary plus, which is plus sign of applied one, is a higher precedence than addition of two. So that's why in this statement, a unary plus on apples, this conversion takes place, as well as this conversion takes place before this plus sign is applied, even though that's the same character three different times in that expression. Operator precedent. If you're not familiar with MDAS, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. I implore you to watch my math and JavaScript series, which will walk you through that. And then we can build on that and add in the JavaScript operator precedence rules as well. Also in this lesson, we learn about assignment and the assignment operator is the equal sign. So when you see a single equal sign, say is assigned to, let X be assigned to two times two plus one. And we know from operator precedence that 2 times 2 happens first, which would be 4 plus 1. We're not comprised when we get 5. But then he goes into some expressions that only an evil JavaScript instructor would put on a test just because they want to test your ability to understand operator precedence. This wouldn't be very cruel to do in real JavaScript because it's so confusing. But if we walk through this, we know that the plus sign on two operands has higher precedence than the assignment statement. The first thing that would happen would be two plus two, which is four. It would be assigned to C. So four is assigned to C. Now B is assigned to C, which is four. So B is assigned to four. And now A is assigned to B. And B is four now. So A is going to be four. And that's exactly what happens on the alert. So he gives you some very interesting and complex expressions to evaluate. Make sure you go through them and understand them. In this case, we've got parentheses, so we're going to be doing that first. We've got an equal sign and a plus sign inside the parentheses. We're going to be doing this first. And B is assigned to 2, so 2 plus 1 is going to be 3. So A is assigned to 3. And then 3 subtracts 3 is assigned to C. And that's why we have A equaling 3 at this point and C equaling 0. The remainder or modulus operator is an interesting operator. It gives us the remainder. So it doesn't matter how many times 2 goes into 5. 5 divided by 2 we know is 2 remainder 1. This is going to result in 1. 8 divided by 3, let's see, 3 goes into 8 
twice with a remainder of two, so that's going to spit out two. And six gets divided by three evenly with no remainders, so the result of that is going to be zero. The modulus operator is very handy to figure out if we have an even number or an odd number. It's also helpful when we're doing packing because certain containers can only hold so many things and we need to know how many remainders we have left over. Exponentiation, multiplying something by itself is the asterisk asterisk. And so 2 to the second power, 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. Increment and decrement. These are special operators that you may encounter the first time in your first programming language, but they're very common to increment or decrement a loop. So if you have a counter and you plus plus it, it's going to end up being 3. If you have a counter and you minus minus it, it's going to end up being 1. Plus plus and minus minus can be either before or after the variable. I have an entire YouTube dedicated just to this one subject. But here are the examples in the book. If counter is 1 and we assign A to plus plus counter, then we're going to increment counter before we assign it to A, and A is going to be 2 as expected. However, if we have counter equals 1 and we assign A to counter plus plus, plus plus is going to happen after the assignment. So A is 1, now counter becomes 2, but A is assigned to counter before counter is incremented. So that can be very tricky to understand the very first time they see it. Let's try one more example on the plus plus. Here we go, counter is one. We're going to alert two times plus plus counter. And because this has a higher precedence than multiply, we're going to increment the counter first, which is gonna be two, multiply by two, get four. However, if we put that plus plus on the end, we know that the counter doesn't get incremented until the very end. And we get two times one, counter is later equal to two, but at the time this runs, counter is still one. It hasn't been incremented yet. The author talks about the bitwise operators that if you see any of these characters, you're talking about a bitwise operator, which works on 32-bit integer numbers and are important in some security operations. Just be aware of them. We're not gonna be using them in JavaScript 1. The modify and place section of this is also very important. And as long as you can read that single equal sign as an assignment operator, you're gonna be solid. While these three statements would not make sense in algebra class because we would never have n is equal to n plus five, we're not gonna say is equal to anymore. We're gonna say is assigned to. But if we declare n and we assign it to two, then this statement says n now you're assigned to whatever you were plus five, that's going to be seven. And n, now you're assigned to whatever you were, which is seven times two. And the result of that's going to be 14. And that's explained right down here. This is critical JavaScript knowledge. So please go through all of this slowly and carefully. Comma operator is also rare. It, we're not going to be covering that in JavaScript 1, but it's there and you might see it in some code sometime and you can come back and explore this if you need to. Please check out my math and JavaScript series for more insights and more practice on the math operators in JavaScript because after this lesson, we're going to jump over to the web page and start putting our results of our JavaScript code on the web page. We're going to start getting information and feed it to our JavaScript from the web page, and life is going to get a lot more exciting. But we had to get all these skills under our belt before we started working directly with the web page. Thank you.